So Buddha, you know, we when you say Buddha, so that uh, in Sanskrit it means old guy like me, and uh, the real word is Buddha. So the Buddha, so Buddha comes from awareness. The word means awakened. Anyhow, let me answer this, and then I will start with the our topic. So Buddha wrote in his book that there was a master Kapila. There is another master Kapila who lived a little more than 3,000 years before Buddha was born. He referred to that master. He taught mindfulness. So now you can easily understand that uh, that what Buddha taught is coming from the same Eastern wisdom. A person is rich. His real home is mansion, big mansion, few cars, and find out a lot of stuff. Yeah. So now, where his intellect lives, that is the question. That defines the wisdom. For example, a person is rich whose intellect always lives in anxiety, always running. No doubt his body lives in mansion. His, he, uh, his mind lives in his cars, in his possessions, in his power, in his pleasure. At the same time, he is always scared of losing them. So I have more wealth. So I must take care. I must be anxious. No doubt about it. He has more fear of losing them. So I'm comparing. The intellect of a meditator always lives and lives in and with the real self. And what are the attributes of the real self? Permanent happiness, love, truth, wisdom. That is the key. So the intellect must live. That is one of, I would say, around 23 characteristics of a successful meditator. It doesn't mean that I'm not working. It doesn't mean that, you know, I'm not a professional, I'm not a family man. Oh, you do everything outside, but still your intellect lays in and with the real self. And that real self is constantly working behind with permanent peace and happiness, love and wisdom. One example, and then we'll directly come to the topic. That guy is not dictated by either outer pleasures or outer pain. Why? Because intellect lives in real self. So it does not mean that he is not receiving the pressure, pain, challenges from the world outside, but he is not affected. That is the key. Why? Why is not affected? Because his intellect shines with the wisdom. What is that wisdom? We are picking up step by step. What is that wisdom? So Eastern wisdom says that this world is undergoing a constant change. 
And this world is like a crooked tail of the dog. Even if you put a cable in the dog tail, it will continue to give you pain, pleasure, profit, loss, victory, defeat. That is the very nature of the world. So he knows how to remain unaffected, unattached with the pain and the pleasure. How many pleasures that you have experienced in your life until date, until today, that you still preserve? Tell me. How many pains and suffering that you have had in the past life, they you still preserve? Because I preserve, I remember. Why? Because of anxiety, because of fear. So where my intellect is living? My intellect is living outside in the world. Even I know this world does not offer me permanent peace and happiness. We are talking of meditation begins with discernment and dispassion in the intellect. If you see that you have never heard about this, this is even what the Buddha says. This is what the tradition of Eastern wisdom is. It is not, no, I let me close my eyes, focus on the breath. So I, I'm focusing on the breath at the same time. I have feeling of ill will against other people and those thoughts are continually coming. It is attracting my mind to go outside, run outside, be in anxiety, be in fear. No, no, I'm still focused on the breath. Yes, I'm focused on the breath. But the mind is working somewhere else. Isn't it? Doesn't it happen in our day-to-day -day life? That intellect must shine with wisdom. Otherwise, meditation will fail. And normally it fails. It looks very goody goody. Oh, close your eyes, sitting in meditation. We return from meditation, and after a few hours, we become the same person again. <laughs> Do you see? That is why the master says two, two words, discernment and dispassion. Before I take up this, these two words, let us understand the journey. The master says, all of our master says, there are primary practices, there are hidden practices, there are secondary practices in the journey to succeed in meditation. What are the primary practices? This is what we are discussing, discernment and dispassion. So there are discernment, dispassion, followed by six inner treasures of the mind. What are those treasures? First treasure is known as sama. Sanskrit word sama means conscious relaxation, dhamma. Are you focused on my beard? We had a long walk in the afternoon. Temperature is very good here. So a couple of people looked at me and they said Santa Claus. I thank them. I said, very good. I said, where is my gift? So where their mind is, they looked at a human being and their mind imagined Santa Claus. That working of the mind will not work in meditation. <laughs> whether you say Santa Claus or whether you say crazy. Are you understanding? That is means 
Second treasure is to withdrawal of the mind, withdrawal of the sense organs from the objects. Second treasure. Third treasure is known as samdam uh, uparati. Uparati means carefree, totally carefree. What comes from the world outside? Your mind is living above the world, not at par with the world, not below the world. When the mind is living below the world, that is the animal kingdom. Means the world is living through me. It will not work. These are all practices should happen in the mind. So there are primary practices that I should understand what the meditation is. I should understand what the practice is. I should understand how the intellect should work. CN, I never talk of religion, cult, dogma, belief. In early days, she asked me, is there a God? I said, why to worry about God? Let us worry about ourselves. Take care of ourselves first. <laughs> then we will see if the God is there. So remember, primary practices, the right knowledge in a right way, in a right manner, should continue to live in my intellect. Success is always there. Then how to get that? So there are three hidden practices. One practice is you are doing. That is known as satsang. What is satsang? In, uh, if I translate, literal translating, translation is company of the real self. How do you get the company of the real self? Listening to these, listening to the teacher, listening to these principles. Hearing, uh, that also means the personalized teaching, customized practices by the teacher. It is a hidden practice. It is a hidden. Second part is, once I realize that these are the thoughts that is causing the problem, so I understand it, I make a list of it, I ask the teacher, and I want to know, how to get rid of this. So these are known as voluntary practices for raising your level of endurance. They are hidden practices. We didn't talk about it before. So the teacher on the way guides you. And the third hidden practice is the path of karma. How to perform those, any action. Honey says, can you give me a cup of tea? I is always asking to you know. No. I must change my attitude inside. I must change. What is that? You, you see, John is taking tea. Tea or coffee, I don't remember. <laughs> you, see, you see that? So every karma, every action, thought, speech, and action in my personal, professional, and social life should be fine-tuned with the knowledge in the intellect. Are you getting it? They are known as the hidden practices. And what are the secondary practices? That we already know. Close your eyes, focus on the breath, chant some mantra, uh, sitting steady. Now you see the primary practice, hidden practice, secondary practices. So these are the secondary practices which we do it because we have to do it. That is also important. You know, pranayama, there are a lot of practices. Some guides you uh, focus on the breath. Other guides you do some with practice with the mantra. Third says, no, first you have to sit in an asana. They are secondary practices. But if the first two group of practices are not clear, we don't follow it, success is not there. What is that success in meditation? That I awaken to my real self, one, and my intellect lives in and with the real self all the time, 24 by 7. Are you getting it? 
You know, I'm just making it very simple. With the, this reference, Patanjali, our master, speaks regular practice with wisdom. Wisdom, regular practice to so wisdom. I'm using the word for dispassion. No, for discernment. So what is discernment? Oh, we'll talk for a while. Here's a result from the web. Okay, Google, stop it. So, <laughs> discernment. Sorry, I don't understand. So, discernment. Simple meaning. To separate real from unreal. To separate ignorance from wisdom. To separate false from real. To separate the alternative facts and the reality from the absolute truth. Now we have heard a lot about during the last four years, alternative reality, alternative facts. We live with alternative facts in our life. Forget about those who used it. That is known as the intellect must penetrate into every thought, speech and action, whether I'm speaking with reference to the real self or I'm speaking with reference to the false self. This is what the discernment. Discernment, simple meaning of discernment, you separate. Like, you know, in old days, they gave, used to give us an example, the sesame seed and rice, they got mixed up, separate them. What it means to meditation? Wrong notions are mixed with the right notions. I have to separate them. Am I the body? But for all practical purposes, I use, I am the body. But my, can my intellect lives in the real self at the same time for a matter of convenience? I use, yes, here I am, here I am sitting, I am referring to the body. how this discernment develops in our intellect by listening to the teacher follows by contemplation and reflection on the real and the unreal. How do we know what is unreal? Just ask the intellect, find out any object in the world outside that is not changing. That is, that keeps on changing. So first property of being a real, it is never changes. It is not influenced and dictated by the time, location, event, condition. It does not need the mind to express in the world outside. I gave one example, you go into the dark room and I ask you, go into that room and find out who, who is there. So you go there in the dark room, there is no one. You come back and you report to me, there is no one. Now my next question is, is who is reporting to me that there is no one? I am. So it means I was there in the room. Do you see that? The mind is so much, so much exposed and attracted and obsessed with the world outside that it forgets oneself. Are you, are you getting it? So there is a constant awareness of the real and the unreal. So what happens by that? I ask my intellect to stick with the real. Then what happens? 
you see that you did not listen to me ego sense so i was i was thinking that my expectation must be met by you that will give me the pleasure now the mind this mind and intellect has a very complex complex group of the thoughts that it developed the ego sense and that ego sense is asking why don't you listen to me and i get upset inside every process is unreal i'm looking for peace and happiness outside that is totally unreal so what happens when i discern constantly contemplate and reflect my life every moment my thought my speech and action so what happens ah, leave it there is no worry about this ego you know if you don't listen to me that's good thank you what happens there comes an inner calmness the mind is not subjected to pleasure seeking in the world outside that withdraws the mind inside so that state comes through the discernment is dispassion without discernment and dispassion nothing can be achieved in any meditation whether you say it is buddha meditation or whether you say it is taught by many great masters in eastern wisdom are you getting it i started with an example where your intellect lives ask warren buffett where your intellect lives in the stocks in the shares just see see a simple thing where those people who are obsessed with the sex where their intellect lives when they go into the store in the mall ask so simple to know it you like pasta so now you see the pasta where your intellect is living <laughs> so i live into that awareness the seeker lives in that awareness yes in the beginning it will happen in the beginning you are going outside mind by virtue of the habit by the instinct by obsession will go there through your awareness bring it back are you getting it through your awareness bring it back that is the inner practice we should do we should always ask where my intellect is living last point why if my intellect is constantly living in the real self which i have yet to discover but the intellect maintains that awareness of the real self after understanding these principles what will happen when you start the practice your mind will drop everything from the world outside you will be settled in meditation are you getting it you park your car in the garage then your body lives in the home you damn care of the car you have parked it you have the keys and everything is there same way when this intellect lives with a clarity and conviction about the real self which is yet to be discovered then you when you close your eyes then what happens the mind says now please move within i have nothing to do with any thought feeling objects which i like or dislike in the world outside then comes the secondary practice did you get it but if we do not follow this 
you know that's why i started this series if we do not follow the primary practices which is purely the practice that is going to happen in your mind and the intellect through your contemplation and reflection that raises your awareness about the goal of life i come to you and then you say okay let us go out you sit in the car so where you want to go no just take anywhere you want you sit in a train and the conductor ask you where are you want to go forget about it here is a money i give me a ticket don't ask me where i'm going that does not become clear if we do not follow the discernment and the discretion in our life not only it helps you in meditation but it helps you in your personal life in your professional life in your social life because now you are living with wisdom i had a wonderful friend in eastern europe so as you know that i always used to go every year twice a year so i've been there for the last 15 years every time but due to the covid i could not go this time so uh, five years ago that guy is very wise and intelligent very wealthy millionaire wife and two kids then one day he told me that now i'm in love with another beautiful woman so i asked him that the way you are applying your intellect why don't you apply your intellect that where lies the pleasure you lived with your first wife you have two kids why don't you see and understand he did not he left first married to the second now he is a regular student of mine he went into the entire journey he felt totally frustrated for the last 2 years he is my regular student he said now i have realized and now i am commitment so what happens you can save yourself from many blunders in your life in your professional life in your social life i used to go to new york upstate it used to take me two and half hours to go to the mental health clinic and return with a very little money i did it for a month and i realized i can spend 5 hours sitting at my home in new jersey will do something better just for the sake of little more money my body becomes used to get fatigue so this discernment and dispassion helps you to understand this entire life that is outside and it helps you to meditate deeply clearly so every time you succeed in meditation i have touched this these two things in a very very primary level so listen to it again and again and see contemplate and reflect if you have any issue you can ask me so let us start our journey of meditation